Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hypnid Podcast, episode 88. My name is Hannah and I'm recording this podcast from Northern Tasmania in Australia. This is a podcast mainly about things that I have been knitting and sometimes crochet, spinning and hand, hand dyeing of yarn. This is an opportunity for me to sit down and share with people that are interested, things that I love and um, I appreciate very much that you're joining me here today and welcome so much to new and returning viewers. I really appreciate you spending some of your time with me and I hope you will enjoy. Today I have a few knitting projects to share with you, a little bit of spinning and some dyeing. I like to start off this episode with mentioning that we do have a year-long knit along happening in the Ravelry group. The Ravelry group you can find by going to Rose Hip Knits podcast under the groups tab in Ravelry. And the knit along is the 2019 Aussie Dyer Sock Along. And this is basically a knit along where you can knit anything using Australian or New Zealand dyed yarn, indie dyed yarn. And it's just a way of us, a way for us to discover indie dyes and patterns and just just having fun knitting things together and sharing all the beautiful things that we make. So if you're interested to join in on the fabulous knit along, then um, head to the Ravelry group and see all the beautiful projects that have already been posted in the finished object thread. And I think I might have put um, my three first um, items for this knit along at the start of this episode. So you would have seen my um, Tasmanian entry, my Victoria entry and my ACT entry in in there. If I haven't put it in the start, it will come around here in the podcast. So yes, I have so far done um, three pairs of socks for the knit along and covered three states, well two states in the territory, and I am thinking about what to do next. So that's happening. What else? Do I have any other things I should mention here at the start? No, I think we'll get into some knitting content. After a sip of tea. Okay, so we talked about the knit along, so I'll show you those, the third pair of socks that I have completed for the knit along. This is my third pair and it's from Dying Dream in um, ACT in Canberra, I think she's... Um, Located? Do I have? Do I have a tag for this yarn? Everything has sort of changed their project bags recently. Here we go. So the yarn is from Dying Dream, and this is a sock yarn. And I did have. This is what I have left. It's a fun rainbow color, bit of with a bit of white in it, and these are the socks. And I really like how they come out with, with having a bit of white in them. They can look a bit washed out on video and on photos, but they're actually really bright. But they have that white in them, which looks a bit like clouds with a rainbow. So I really like that. The pattern that I have used is the non-Euclidean socks by Sarah Jordan. And not only are these an entry into our knit along, uh, the Aussie Dyer Sock Along. They're also an entry to the Lots of Socks Cow, which is a um, sock along um, where a lot of different designers are um, collaborating and joining in and profits from a few sock patterns or quite a few sock patterns from these designers that are part of it. A lot of the profits are being donated to think um, Down syndrome I'm not sure which organization it is but it's for Down syndrome and the lots of socks Cal has um, already donated or have um, collected a lot of money through this knit along for this charity and um, I think it, ha it has, or it will end in just a couple of days. Um, but the non-Euclidean socks were one of the patterns where, when I purchased it, the the um, the money would have gone to uh, this charity. And 
by joining the cow and posting FOs, you can go in and um, drawing to win some amazing prizes that have been donated to this cow. So that was fun to join in on. Uh, go to Paper Daisy, is it Paper Daisy Creations. I'll put the information on the screen for the Ravelry group where this knit along was hosted. I think it's by Lisa Ross, is the designer. And uh, yes, there's a lot of amazing socks in the FO thread there. So let's talk about the uh, socks. I really enjoy this pattern. You work it cuff down and uh, my sock bubbles are going everywhere. Work it cuff down and then you with some increases, you create like a triangle to the back of the heel, then you do some short rows, I guess they are, and then you're back to knitting the foot. So they're a bit um quite similar to the um, not vanilla, is that what they're called? I talked about this in my last episode. It's similar to another pattern and uh, with creating this, but the other pattern has a, a rib going down here in this triangle. I really enjoyed making them. This fun, colourful yarn definitely made it um, just really enjoyable. It's just so fun to work with colours and they make you happy. And they're a good fit as well. I don't know that I, um, that all my stitches are really tight and nice here, but they're okay. They're okay. They will work. I really like how the striping came out here with the shorter rows. But that's those. Third pair for our knit along and the pair for the lots of socks. Cow. So that was finished. What else? Another thing that I was working on last time that I shared with you, which was for another cow actually, isn't this funny? I said to myself at the beginning of this year, Hannah, this year you're not going to go crazy in joining all the cows. And you're not going to do a lot of test knits because I didn't want to put myself under pressure and I just want to um not knit for deadline so much, just have knitting there as something to pick up at night and just for relaxing when watching TV. Um, turns out almost everything I knit again are for knit alongs and I'm doing a test knit at the moment. But at least it's um I'm being quite selective with things that I join in on and I make I only join things that I think will fit what I'm doing anyway, if that makes sense. Anyway, I made a pair of mittens, and these mittens are for the the woolly the, the woolly thistle mitten cow. And this is the fourth year running for this cow. I think it ends end of March, and it's the fourth year that I am entering mittens in this cow. So the the mittens that I made, and I think I had one completed last time. Not sure. These mittens are the Signa mittens, and they are by Clara Falk, Clara Falk, uh, and they are from a Swedish mitten book called um, Mittens for All Seasons, Vanta for Alla Ostido. This was an ebook that I purchased on Ravelry a while ago. I had made another pair from there, and I thought I have this fantastic resource of mittens, so I really want to do more patterns, more designs from the book, so I decided to, to do that. The reason also why I decided on this pattern was that I had these skeins of yarn in my stash. The blue, the darker blue, which is a variegated, and then a light blue, they are um, skeins of Mano Silk Blend that I received as a, I think it was an Instagram giveaway from Arctic Knitting in Norway. So I had those two 50 gram skeins, and when I was looking for something to make for this mitten knit along, I was trying to find something that I had in stash and something that I had in my library and see if there was something that I would be able to combine. And um, there was someone who had made uh, this mitten design using the Mano Silk Blend. So I decided um, that that was something that I was going to do. And it was definitely not something that I would 
think of doing using a wool silk blend single ply yarn for color work meters but I saw, thought someone else has done it I'll give it a go the thing was that when I I was going to use mostly these two colors and just have the purple as a small contrast um, but it turned out when I did the the body of the mitten you couldn't see the pattern very clearly because in the dark variegated blue this light blue um, appears as well so it's just all muddling together so the purple color they're actually two strands of my own hand dyed single ply merino and I have some kits in my shop on Etsy it's Rose Hip Island on Etsy I have some kits with five minis they're called Moody Rainbow and they have a the pink and the purple and have a green and the yellow and the blue and uh, so what I did was that I took the purple and the pink from a mini skein set and I double stranded them and knitted here so I've got this fun variegated tonal uh, pink and purple color and I used it as my main color and they worked really well together and uh, because of the gauge, and I don't think the pattern is written for a DK weight, I um, I had to cut out uh, a bit of the the chart uh, to get the right length, and I did the same with the thumb. But apart from that, um, they were quick to make and fun to make, and they fit quite well. Because of this yarn not being um, like a traditional non superwash yarn, they didn't block out as well as I'd hoped they're still fine they don't they look pretty and even but the blocking doesn't really do much um, to change the look of them but they're nice and cozy they're a bit wide but they're fine Perfect. so I completed my missions for that knit along so that's my my pair of mittens for this year. I think I'll, I'll now try to make one pair of mitten, mittens per year for this knit along, and that's really all the knit, mittens that I need. Well, it's more than what I need, <laughs> but I really enjoy making them. And I'm so happy that I was able to use another pattern from the ebook. It's a really great ebook um, with lots of beautiful patterns in it. So, they are my two finished items that I have worked on. Let's take a cup of tea, a, cup, a sip of tea. I hope it doesn't seem like I'm rushing through this. I have actually recorded this episode a couple of days ago. It's Monday today and I did do a recording end of last week but the sound was terrible. There was all this noise in the background and I just could not um, cope with putting it up on YouTube I thought that would just be cool to anyone who would watch so I'm doing it again and I was able to finish work a bit earlier today so I'm trying to do this before my children come home um, so hopefully that will happen and hopefully the sound will be okay this time okay so they were finished things and I have continued working on a few things that I showed you last time so what should I show you first Let's show you some. That was a soft blocker. Sorry about that. Let's see. Okay, so I'm working on a pair of hand spun socks, and I showed you the start of these last time. Last time I was working on two separate nine inch circulars. This is some of my hand spun. It's hand spun, it's Corridale, 100% Corridale. And this is actually from a fleece that I washed and processed, you know, flicked and spun it, I dyed it, everything. So from fleece to finished dyed yarn, I did quite some time ago. And I have never known what to do with it. It's very rustic and woolly. It's quite ropey. Um, and I had quite a bit of it and uh, I just it, I was thinking like it was a good amount for a shawl or something but it was just not soft enough to be next to skin 
And I've never thought about making socks out of it just because it's 100% Crowdale and I've always thought of socks um, to be something you need to have nylon in. But now that I've made a, a few pairs of no nylon socks, um, I thought, well, I, I can use this for socks. There's no reason not to. I can always reinforce heels and toes if I think they will get more wear. But really, this um, yarn being so much like rope and um, quite tightly plied and Corolla has quite a long staple length so I do think it is suitable for a sock without nylon. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do any reinforcing of the heels and toes um, we'll see. But I was knitting them on, on two smaller circular needles but just because this yarn is quite ropey, doesn't really have much spring in it, and I think I have quite, um, they're a little bit larger, I think. They're not actually larger when I put them on my leg, but because they don't have a lot of spring in them, they just um, look larger and they spread out more over the needles. So, anyway, um, I didn't feel comfortable working on the nine inch circulars and I decided to just put them two together on magic loop um, and that's what I'm doing and I find that I'm, I'm I'm enjoying it more now it's less straining on my hands I haven't been doing a huge deal of, of knitting on these they're only grab and go project really just when I, I can't work on anything larger or anything um, that requires any amount of thinking so I'm just doing those every now and then um, I normally really really enjoy working with hand spun it's so much fun and I, I, I still find it fun to work with hand spun but it's not it's not soft and springy and, and wonderful in my hands but it would be great to have a pair of socks out of this they are now long enough for me to be able to start on heels I haven't decided yet what to do for heels and I have so much left of this I think I'll probably be able to get three pairs of socks out of this yarn and I'm not sure I want to make three pairs of socks out of this yarn so I thought I should just try to keep going for as long as I can possibly um, stand it on the leg before I make um, the heel I'll probably make a fish lips kiss heel because I don't think I want to cut a yarn and um, put an afterthought heel in and I don't think I want to do a heel flapping gusset it's just not my thing <laughs> but that's um, that's those they're happening slowly but they're happening another thing oh, I'll show you another pair of socks actually I started on a pair of socks since last time let me just check my notes so I don't miss anything um, I have started on a new pair of socks since last time and the reason I started this was that I had a look in the um, Aussie Sock Knitter group yes Aussie Sock Knitter group on Ravelry I was just browsing in Ravelry and having a look at the groups that I am a member of just you know checking the that sort of front board not going into the group but just to see the most recent threads and things like that and then um, I noticed that on the Aussie Sock Knitter group there was an older stash a March and April knit along so I, I was curious and had a look I often have a look at what knit alongs they have and they have so many great socks posted in in that group Um, so I had a look and they're having a knit along where I think you can you you can do the sock madness qualifier sock or go and find the oldest sock yarn in your stash and knit a pair of socks from that and that just made me really curious to know what is my oldest sock yarn so I had a look at Ravelry and um, I have everything in my stash on Ravelry I think there might be some things that I have not put on there but most things and I started using it I think almost from the start when I joined Ravelry so I can see when things have been added so how old it is and um, I had some partial skeins that were quite old 
but the first, the oldest full skein of silk yarn that I had was this one. And this is a Moda Vera Noir, and I bought it from Spotlight. And um, it's just been sitting in my stash. I haven't really felt any desire to use it, I guess. But I was curious about it when I saw it and see how it would knit up. So I purchased it, but then I've had so many beautiful things added to my stash since. So I haven't really felt the need to use it. But when this knit along, um started and I looked this up I thought okay well I'm either going to make a pair of socks out of this or I'm going to give it away to someone who will actually use it because it's not going to sit in my stash any longer this was added to my stash in 2013 so it's been sitting there for quite some time but I decided no I'm going to make a pair of socks so I'll give it a go and I started on a pair of gingle socks, I think they're called, by Chrissy Graham. And Chrissy Graham uh, is the host of Snappy Stitches podcast, she's Manic Pearl on Instagram. And her podcast, I've been, I've been following, well, since it was an audio podcast, maybe even before I joined Ravelry. So I've, I've followed her from the start, like really early on. And I always enjoy when she has a, a, an episode up on, on YouTube. I really enjoy Chrissy's, um, all her projects she does and all the things that she talks about. So she released this pattern some time ago and I've had it in my library. And um, I thought, okay, this is the time I'm going to do this pattern that I've been sitting in my library for a while and match it with this yarn that has been sitting in my stash for quite some time so just making use of things and um, actually making things out of the yarn that I have. First it looked like it was going to do some crazy pooling when I just started but it's sort of evening out a little bit now and I quite like it. The pattern does have a heel flap and gusset I think. I might not do that because as I said, that's just not really my thing. I might do a fishly kiss heel again on this. I might even find a fun contrasting yarn. No, I'll do a fishly kiss heel because I don't want to weave in any extra ends and I want to use up as much as I can out of this. So I'll keep going a little bit longer on the leg and then I have a heel to do. So that's happening. Again, this is just not... Um, getting a lot of attention just a little bit when it sort of fits in what I'm doing. Other things I was working on last time. Oh, the, the big thing I was working on last time was my Magnolia, my Magnolia sweater by Camille Lavard. She's a Danish designer. This um, jumper was in an issue of Liner. Uh, you can all, it was also a um, individual pattern on Ravelry that you can purchase and that was that's what I did. So this is my Magnolia so far. So I've I've done the yoke from top down, separated the sleeves and I'm working on the body and I can't remember how much further I have to go but then there will be lace and then I'll do the sleeves and there will also be lace towards the, the ribbing of the sleeve. Um, so I have done a little bit on this since last time. I have this much left on my first two bowls. So what I am working this in is Holst Garn in Coast, which is a wool and cotton blend in the graphite. And these are 50 grams each. And in 50 grams, you get 350 meters. I have three of those. And then I have um, the Silk Mo hair, which is the high tea colorway. And it's from Cola Girl Collective in Adelaide. And it's a myrtle lace um, base. So I have 200 grams skeins of those. And I have 350 gram skeins of the Holst Coast. Coast. Uh, so I have 
the lace at the bottom of the body and the sleeves left to do. I will just, if I don't have enough of the yarn, I will just make the sleeves a bit shorter, I think. This was, um, I mean, I love how this looks. And this was just a result of me wanting to use what I had in the stash. And um, I was just happy to do the experiment and see what it would look like. And I'm so happy that it is so great. I really liked um, the construction and how this, I mean, it's just a circular yoke and it just has, you know, increases. and um, But it felt like it had a really good fit. And um, really well written pattern, and I'm going to continue on the lace once I have the time, time and space to do it. But I've started on some other things, so this has not uh, been getting a lot of attention lately. It's beautiful, beautiful, and I am. Um, I have been doing a lot of this, uh, as you have seen, uh, using uh, two strands doubled together and using old stash and new stash. And I really find it um, really enjoyable. And it's like I have another another way of creating colours and textures um, than I had before. You can create colours with dyeing and you can create textures with using different stitches. But if you mix yarns together, you can mix colors to create a new color and you can create different textured uh, yarn to create another texture again. And yes, I just, I am really enjoying it. And um, I'll show you some other things I've been working on where I've been doing this. Can't wait to have that done. It's quite different to anything I have in my wardrobe, I think. And I am, yes, really looking forward to have that done, but I have some other things I need to do first. <laughs> okay, some tea. I feel like I'm talking really quickly today. I do hope the sound will be fine in this episode, otherwise I might just put a warning and um, publish it anyway. Time is too valuable <laughs> to do this and just let it not be anything. Okay, so I have started some other new things. This first thing I'm going to show you has took quite a bit of my time for a while. And that's why I did not work on my magnolia. And I don't know if I showed you the yarn before. For Christmas 2018. I not only did my um, advent calendars, the mini advent calendars, I also did Secret Santa skeins. And the Secret Santa skeins were, let's see if I have the tag. Yes. It was the year Rudolph got tangled in the Christmas trees. The Christmas tree. Christmas lights. Sorry. Um, and I had a few skeins of that because there were some that just did not cut it to be um, in my to be sent off really. Um, I think there were some that had a knot in and some that just were a little bit off in, in color. But I had some and I wanted to start using them. And I went crazy searching in Ravelry for patterns and I wanted it to be so fingering weight something that would go well with a variegated but I also wanted some color work in it and I could not really find anything and I had these um, mohair skeins from 24 mile hollow yarn company and I'll show them together and you can see so these are my secret Santa skeins and this is the mohair from 24 Mile Hollow Yarn Company. And I just really wanted to use them together. I think they looked so great. Um, so I was searching and searching. I couldn't really find anything. And then in the end, I decided to cast on like the magnolia and just use that um, the shaping of the magnolia. Start top and go down, create the yoke and then just do a 
a plain uh, fingering weight jumper out of it. But I wanted to do some color work with the mohair. And this mohair is a fine fingering weight, so it's a bit thinner than the sock yarn. But I did find another jumper called Juvenile. Let's see here, she has one. By Miss Yvonne. And I really liked that it had three lines of color work, but they were not just stripes, they had um, a texture to them uh, created by pearls and knits. So I thought I'll just up, I'll put that um, those textured lines into my magnolia. Then I had um, some differences in my gauge, so I had to figure out what size to make to actually make it my size. Anyway, in the end, I I cast on. Oh, I dropped it. Um, having done quite a bit of research and thinking and playing around with this and this is what I have so far. So this is the magnolia construction and it's a size bigger than my other one because this is at a tighter gauge and these stripes here are the stripes that the juvenile um, sweater has. So I just combined them I'm using quite, I think I'd used a two millimeter for the ribbing and then I'm using a two and a half for the body. And it is, um, it looks tiny, but it does actually stretch quite a bit. But it does sit right up on my neck. So what I think, I think I might just fold it down and stitch it up just to create a more open neck. But I could also just rip it up and, and do something with, as a loop, with a, a bigger needle or just a shorter neckline. So I have that and now I'm just working on the body and I'm just going to do it straight and I might do some more of this textured, might do one of those textured stitches lines at the bottom before the ribbing and also on the sleeves. It's hard to see. Um, I use two skeins alternating of my Secret Santa colorway because of how these skeins are, they're just every skein is going to be quite different just because of how they are dyed. But I had two that are quite similar, so they were the two that I used to start with. Then, when I started the body, I thought I'm going to need more than two skeins in total with the sleeves. I have done a short sleeved um, top before in my sock yarn. And with two skeins, I was able to get the short sleeve. So I knew that I needed a third skein to get longer sleeves. And I had um, some other skeins, and some of them were a bit darker than these ones, and then I had a lighter one. So this, you can see, is quite a bit lighter. It's the same colours, but it, um, it comes out much lighter. And I thought, well, I don't want to just start using this third skein on the sleeves because it's going to look quite different. And I can't remember where I had read about this. I don't know if it was in the knit along in my Ravelry group or somewhere else, but someone said that they actually alternate three skeins when they knit a garment. Um, so that's what I started doing. And when I got down to here, I started um, incorporating a third skein. Just, um, it doesn't matter if up here is a bit darker because you have these lines anyway. But I started to put in the lighter skein here. And I think it looks fine. And I know I have previously talked about helix knitting that in my other top that I did in Delicious Sock Yarn in the Louisa's colorway, Louisa's wedding colorway, I had used helix knitting where you just when you alternate the skeins, you don't um twist them or anything, you just sort of knit so that they go in a spiral around both of them. Hard to explain, but I thought um, everyone were talking about this, and I thought um, there must be something more to it than what I'm doing. And I went to Babel, Babel's Traveling Yarn podcast because I know that she had been talking about it, and I found her tutorial on, on YouTube for the method she uses. And it's not helix knitting; it's helical knitting, which is very similar, but with the helical knitting, you actually slip some stitches when you go from one strand of yarn to the other one. 
um, have a look on YouTube for a video if, if you like to know what I'm talking about. If you don't understand, I know. I'm not going to try to ex explain it in detail. Um, but I, I was doing that and then I thought, okay, well I want a third skein in there. So I've just, I'm doing it with three skeins. I don't know if I'm doing it right, but it seems to be working. But I'm, um, so I have two strands hanging off the garment and then I knit the third one. And I knitted to a couple of stitches before I get to the strands again. Then I slip those stitches and I slip one strand and I slip until I get to the third strand and I start knitting with that. And then I'll have, if these are my strands of yarn, then I'll have, I'll knit with that one and I get back to this one. I'll slip and get, I can't explain it, can I? So basically, I'm doing helical knitting with three strands of yarn. And it's, it was a bit, um, not complicated, but it took a bit of time to sort of set it up and work my head around it. But now it just, I just knit, knit, knit. Uh, so I was very excited about that because again, bright, fun colours, happy, just so much fun to work on. But then, um, I signed up for a test knit. <laughs> and as I said before, this year, oh did I say that? Or was that in there something I cut out? Anyway, this year I was not really going to do any knit alongs and I was not going to do any test knits because my life is um, stressful enough, enough as it is and I want my knitting and my hobbies to be things that I just can relax with and enjoy. Um, and not that I don't enjoy knit alongs and test knits, I love them, I love them, but anything with a deadline, it's still, um, it's just have, it has that element of a bit of stress and, stress and rush. So I've been trying to take a step back from those things. But of course, if it is something that fits into what I do anyway, I'm more than happy to do it. So that's good, that's all good. Most of the things that I'm working on at the moment are for knit alongs, but it's because um, I can fit it in without feeling the stress. But with test knits, um, I remember when I first started doing test knits, I would actually go into the Ravelry, I think there's a group called Test Knitters or something like that. I'd go in there and I'd actively search for things that I could test knit and I'd apply to um, be considered a test knitter and I'd um, be so happy if, if someone chose to have me as a test knitter and I'd do those and I'd, I would do those, I would do test knit at most times. And then I started to be on the Airburn list for some designers and started getting emails when there was a new test knit and I, um, I would I wouldn't have to go and search for a test knit they would sort of um, I'd get notifications about it so I would only do those test those designers that I really enjoy and I had really good collaborations with and then and I would say yes most of the time to those because I felt like so grateful that they would um, want me to test knit and then I decided that no, I would only test knit if it's something that I have stuff in my stash for. And then I would um, start saying no if it wasn't something that I actually felt like I could fit in without feeling stressed about getting it finished in time. So I've cut down on it a lot. Um, but I still have a few designers that I just really really enjoy working with I think they are amazing pattern writers and I'm always so happy to make their things so there are some that I would definitely say yes uh, most of the time unless I'm just, just not not at all capable of making the deadline or if it's something that I just can't see myself making Anyway, I had an email about one of these test needs from one of my favourite designers and it was something that I could really see myself making and for my daughter she could um, she would definitely use it. So I showed, showed it to my eight-year-old and she said, oh yes, I'd like one of those in blue. I had a look in my stash and I could find something. So I had someone to make it for. I had this, the yarn in my stash and I said, yes, I'll definitely do this. So I am... Um, I'm doing that test knit. So that has been, um, I've had to spend some time on, on that, uh, which is fun because I've really enjoyed 
and making it and uh, it's secret so I can't share it with you but I'm still talking about it because what I might I am doing again is like I said I use stash yarn so I had some more of the Holst Garn Coast and this is the Jade colorway so it's the wool and cotton I had 100 grams of that so I had 700 meters and um, this is a garment and it's going to be for my eight-year-old and um, the sign uses a I think a wool and a mohair so I thought oh, we could do something similar to what I'm doing with my, with my magnolia so I had another skein of this 24 mile hollow yarn company New Zealand Merino do I have a tag no I don't I had another one of those so this is the same as the pink one that I'm using in my Frankenstein sweater so I had 440 meters of this and I'm holding them double and I made a little switch and it's at a quite a loose gauge it's fine and I just really enjoy how combining two colors this is more green this is more dark blue but combining them together and you get like a third color and the stash yarn I'm so happy to use them because I love them both but I wasn't really sure what to make with them and as I said I have 700 meters of this I only have 440 of this one but my daughter said that she'd be happy to use the pink one that I have as well in the same I'd be happy to use that as maybe for the ribbing uh, of the garment or just the parts of the garment um, so we'll see we'll see how much I need um, and I'll just make it work but that's something that I'm trying to work a lot on at the moment so I get this test done in time for the deadline Enough on it. Really love it. And they are all of the things that I have been knitting on, and it's quite a bit, isn't it? It's a beauty. In my last episode, I did tell you that I had been starting to do some spinning, and I can show you this time. What I have been spinning is this, it's Elfin Woolly, it's a wool and nylon mix that was given to me um, as a present and I divided it up in two 50 gram um, stripes and then the two halves I divided up in I think 10 strips each and I filled one bobbin with each half I just have that. Oh, where do I show that? I have one still that's just a single ply, and I just when I spin, I just do whatever it wants to do. I don't, I'm not very technical about it. Um, and what I have done with the one, the first bobbin is that I have Navajo plied it, and it's looking a bit funky. The drive band broke on my spinning wheel when I was at the end of Navajo plying this, so the end got a bit funny. Um, but that's it's plied in a three ply chain ply so that's the difference there so I'm going to Navajo ply this one as well and then I'll have two 50 gram skeins that are chain plied um, to make socks I just thought it would be fun oh it would be fun to um, show you when it's just a single ply and then when it has been Navajo plied like that So that's those that I'm doing and I wanted to show you some old hand spun that I have because sorry I've seen a um, few people making the I think it's called the night shift shawl and it's um, it's really suitable for hand spun yarn so I have all these 100 gram skeins and they're all beautiful and um, but I would like to work them up together or something and the night shift shawl, um, I think it's by Andrea Maori, it looks great. 
and I think it is using quite perhaps DK weight or worse weight but I just don't know that I need another shawl especially not a thick one so I almost wanted to use these and, and make a garment make a jumper I don't know There's all sorts of different fibers in there and then because this wouldn't be enough for a bigger project than a shawl even though this I mean this 400 grams here I thought maybe I should spin up some more in a similar sort of color to go with them to be able to make something bigger but I don't know I don't know what's your favorite pattern for hand spun yarn I need to use it up it's too good to be lying around so yes a little bit of, of spinning but not um, a huge deal Another thing that I have done is that I have done a little bit of dyeing and I did have a little bit of a break but I have been hitting the dye pots again so I have a few new things. Um, however I won't put anything in my Etsy shop, anything new in my Etsy shop I think for another couple of weeks because I'm actually going to attend a market. Um, there's going to be a Makers Expo in Launceston on the 30th of March it's going to be in Albert Hall in Launceston and it's the first time this market um, is on and I thought I'd give it a go I haven't I had not until just a couple of days ago decided or I, I wasn't 100% certain that I would be able to to make it but now I know that I will be able to be there so I'll be there from I think it's 9 till 4 on the 30th of March so I'll have as much of my hand dyed yarn that I can bring with me and I can display there and uh, I'm not sure what the other stall holders what they have I don't know who else will be there really and um, as I said it's the first time this market is on so it's all brand new but I will have a table there with uh, my hand dyed yarn and I'll be there. So if you're in or around Launceston on that weekend, then um, come and say hello. It's going to be on um, on the Saturday, and that's when the farmers market is in is on in Launceston, and it's only down the street that Albert Hall is. So it's a good um, good opportunity to go to both of those markets. So um, yes, come and uh, see me at that market. Um, yes, as I said, I won't put anything new in the Etsy shop until after that market uh, because it just means sort of double work to first list it and then take it off and have the store. So I'll list it after the market. Um, but what I have um, done that's new is that I have tried to include a mini skein in each of my uh, dye pots. So what I wanted to do was that I wanted to dye up a bit of my sort of old favourites, my regular colourways. So I've dyed up more sea spray, raindrops, dirty gold. I love how they look together. And some onyx. And then I've done, I did some new ones, just some fun, colourful things that don't have any names yet and I have a few more drying at the moment so they're just mini skeins of things that I have batches of yarn of um so I'll my my thought was to make little samples knit up with this but I think I really like the look when dyers they make a little swatch and then you can see what the yarn looks like the colorways look like um, knitted up but I don't know if I can see myself making little squares out of all these different colorways um, it would be funny if I could make something that I could actually use or could be useful even if just for display my, my aim is to add more and more um, knit up examples for all my different colorways both old ones and then adding new ones and yes um oh yeah so 
one of them in the full strength. And I think I've spoken about my things. I even got that market in there, the information. I'll definitely put some information about the market up on Instagram. Um, one last thing. I, I think I spoke last time about colour work and different yarn basis for colour work and how I had really enjoyed did I talk about this? Is this something that I talked about in a Ravelry group? Anyway, I was looking for yarn to make nice traditional colour work jumpers out of, like how I used Rauma for my Starfall sweater that I shared with you last time. And I was yes, I posted on, on Ravelry and asked a question, what what have you used? What's your experience? What's good that you, we can get hold of in Australia? And then I remembered that I made this dog star jumper for my daughter. It's a tin can knit pattern. I think it came out um, at a similar time as the Strange Brew from by Tin Can Knit. But dog star is an individual pattern. Um, I made that uh, for my daughter, and I used the Yo Sharp Classic DK, and that jumper came out really, really nice. And my daughter actually enjoys wearing it. So it's a very, um, it's quite a rustic wool. It's a non-super wash and it's a nice thick and it's just great for colour work. It's not, it's not as, as rustic as the Rauma, but um, yes, it was, it was just perfect for colour work. So I thought, oh, that's, I really, really like that one. I'll, I'll see if I can find some online. And of course, when I had a look, the Yo Sharp website actually had some um, colorways that they had. I don't know if they were discontinued or what, but they were on clearance. So I ended up buying some of those. So I think I have about 10 skeins of the China colorway. So that could be the main color for a jumper. I have a few of the Heath colorway and a few of the Cyclamen, I think. So I have those three to make a non-traditional colour um, colour work jumper. And then I still had some leftovers um, from the jumper I made for my daughter. So that green. So I could use that, but something there. So yes. I remember that, Joe Sharp. I really enjoy the DK, uh, classic DK for colour work. So I found those and they were can't remember how much they were maybe they were 30% off or something the normal price so I thought I like those colors I'll just grab them now that I um, have the opportunity so they're for a future sweat project hmm. I think that's all for this time I really really hope that the sound is okay uh, because now I have spent another hour on this even though I really enjoy talking about my knitting and my wool and everything I don't want to repeat it too many times. I like I like to have made have something new to show you when I talk to you next time. So hopefully this one will make YouTube. Um I think that's all. So yes, um I'm on Etsy, Rose Sip Island, if you're interested in purchasing some hand-dyed yarn. And um Yes, I'm on Instagram as Rose Hip Chick. I'm on Ravelry as Rose Hip Chick. Come and join the Ravelry group. We're having lots of fun there. And um, yes, if you have any comments, please um, send them to me in any way that you prefer. And um, I'd love it if you do a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this episode. And if you subscribe to the channel, I'll be really grateful. So. That's all for this time. I um, thank you so much for watching and being here with me. Until next time, take care. See you next time. Bye.